Look, it's easy to get caught up in hype when new products are announced, especially when that new product is from Apple. But I mean this from the depths of my soul, from the bowels of my irritable bowel syndrome. This MacBook Pro, this 14 inch M1 Pro base model, I'm talking bottom of the barrel, this thing's made with scrap parts, base model, MacBook Pro. I, it's actually mental. Now this isn't gonna be some super in-depth review, because you know, if you're a new subscriber or you're an old subscriber, I just need you to know that I don't really do in-depth reviews. I'm here to just share my point of view. If you like it, subscribe. If you don't, you know where the door is. I, I don't know where the door is in your house, but you know where the door is. Get out of here, it's fine. So what I wanna do is talk about the laptop itself really briefly and quickly, because I actually think that's the boring part of this laptop. Although I love the design, and we'll talk about that. What's under the hood and the performance of this laptop is what's truly mind blowing, especially considering this is the base model. But let's talk about the laptop from a design standpoint first. First off, this thing is absolutely beautiful. I really, really love the design. I actually like that it's kind of a thick boy. It is definitely thicker than laptops you might be used to from Apple for the last like five years, four years. And most of the thickness is actually just the appearance of thickness because the previous generation was actually fake thin. They tapered the edges. I wish I could be fake thin. I wish I could taper my edges and just tell people it's 70% thinner now. Apple kind of pulled a fast one all of us saying it was a thin laptop just by making it look a bit thinner. Now they've just sort of extended the corner so it feels a little bit thicker without actually being that much thicker. So it's more of an optical illusion. I don't think this thing feels thick. It doesn't even really look that thick in person, but it definitely still has a bit of that chunky appearance to it. One of my favorite details on the new design is this etched MacBook Pro on the bottom. It makes me wanna just like display this thing in a triangle to show off the bottom. I think that MacBook Pro actually looks better than the Apple logo on the back of the laptop. I almost wish that etched MacBook Pro was the new back of the MacBook. Also on the appearance front, but also a bit of function, the keyboard is now black underneath the keys and this keyboard actually feels extremely nice. It reminds me a lot of the Magic Keyboard on an M1 iPad Pro or if you had the new Magic Keyboard that came with the iMacs of late. Very nice keyboard, feels really good. No more crappy keyboards in MacBooks. You don't have to worry about that. I guess we also have to talk about the notch. For me, it's just sort of blended into the experience already. I don't see it. You might see it if it bothers you. I don't know what to tell you, get over it or skip this one. I have a feeling this notch is gonna be here for a very long time. I'm sure they'll add features to it before they ever take it away. So either get used to it or hit the road. While we're in display territory, let's talk about the actual display. This XDR is nuts. It looks absolutely stellar. I haven't seen any blooming issues, which we are used to on the M1 iPad Pro and I am an M1 iPad Pro 12.9 inch user. So I'm very aware of the blooming issue. It doesn't bother me, but we don't see it on this one, at least I haven't seen it yet. The ProMotion also looks very good. I'm not a big fan of ProMotion on phones, I just don't think it's necessary, but on a computer, it is very nice on that big screen. We'll dive more into all these features in an upcoming video. This is just like first impressions, but you know, we have to talk about the inputs and outputs. So connectivity wise, this thing's an absolute monster. It felt so good putting an SD card in that SD card reader. Oh yeah. Like it was, it was a spiritual experience, which is so sad because like what, 2015 they got rid of that thing, 2016? Why? Nobody will ever know, but hey, they listened, it's back. It's so nice to just pop your SD card in there, transfer your footage and you're editing and you're on the way. You're also getting the HDMI, th four Thunderbolt ports, MagSafe, all that fun stuff. Kind of boring in my opinion, whatever. You plug your stuff in, headphone jack, yeah. We'll dive into that in another video. What really matters is the performance of this laptop. So what I wanna do now is, and I've done some tests already, so this is just me kind of doubling back to show you what I know this thing is capable of now, is I'm gonna dive over here on the actual MacBook Pro 14 inch. Again, the specs of this are bottom of the barrel, base model, eight core CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, no upgrades, 512 gigabyte base storage, nothing. No bells and whistles added to this machine. This is the 1999 machine, nothing. This is what this thing is capable of. So let's just jump over to the laptop. I'm gonna show you how this thing rips. First up, we're gonna do H.265. If you're not familiar with HEVC, a lot of modern cameras like the A7S III and this Lumix S5 shoot H.265 or HEVC. And I love this codec a lot because it lets me shoot a lot at very low file sizes, but at really high quality. Now, historically, HEVC has been incredibly taxing on machines and so it's hard to justify the lower file sizes if your machine can't even handle it but once you switch to h265 
it is a dream. I just love how little storage I need for the quantity of content that I shoot. So I've loaded up eight streams of 4K24 HEVC from the Lumix S5. And so first off, I've got scrubbing in the timeline here, which is nuts. Now, the reason it looks so bad and crappy is I've layered all of them so you can see each video in stream. So it's not actually just a layer. You're watching all of these streams at once. I'll full screen it real quick just so you can see. But all of these streams of 4K HEVC are playing back in real time, no drop frames. If there was drop frames, Final Cut would be telling you. And on top of that, I'm also in better quality mode. This isn't even better performance mode. This thing is just ripping. And on top of that, I've also applied a LUT to the log footage and I've done a very basic color correction so that there's some stuff done to the footage itself. It's not just plain old Jane footage. Now, the reason this thing is going so fast is the M1 Pro and M1 Max have a media engine built into the M1 chip, which is allowing it to render and playback and transcode all that kind of stuff with HEVC and ProRes. So what I'm going to do is export this, render it, as a ProRes file, let's just see how long it takes. This is a 19 second clip of eight layers of 4K24. Let's see how fast it can blow through that. So I've set up a ProRes file, we're gonna render it. I'm gonna hit the start button at the exact same time. We're just saving this to the desktop, all internal storage. Let's go. I literally can't believe how fast this thing is going. 14 seconds for a 20 second clip that is faster than real time. Again, that's eight layers of 4K24 HEVC simultaneously playing on screen, rendering all at the same time in 14 seconds on a laptop, on a base model laptop. But we are not done there. While we're in Final Cut, let's take a look at some ProRes RAW. So the Ronin 4D came out recently and DJI put up a whole bunch of footage for the Ronin 4D on their website. So I downloaded some Ronin 4D and I got to four layers. I could probably do even more. Same deal as before. You can see all the layers already playing at once so that it's actually playing all at once. This isn't just some stack. All four streams of this 6K ProRes RAW is playing back in real time right now. No drop frames because, again, when it drops frames, Final Cut warns you. This thing is just ripping. I'm gonna, so I'm going to render this 6K as 4K because that's how most people would actually render 6K footage. You're looking for more than your timeline resolution. So let's render this at 4K ProRes 422 and see how long it takes. And here we go. So a little slower than the HEVC, but only like five seconds slower than real time, which is still insanity when you consider there was four streams of 6K ProRes RAW rendered out to 4K ProRes 422 in very close to real time. Insanity. Now, just for fun, I also had Resolve running in the background during all those tests. So let's just flip over to Resolve. And I've already set up a project in here, just like I did in Final Cut. This time we've got 6K B-RAW in a 4K timeline of Q0, which is Blackmagic's lowest compression level for Blackmagic RAW. This time I've got seven layers of it playing back, no issues with scrubbing, no issues with playback, no drop frames. The thing is still ripping just like it did in Final Cut. So if that doesn't sell you on this machine being absolutely legendary, I'm not sure what will. We will do a lot more tests with this. We'll try out some Adobe stuff and some photo stuff too, but this is already way beyond any sort of stress testing that I would do in my day-to-day -day use as a filmmaker, as a photographer, whatever. This thing is more than enough than I will ever need probably for the next few years. My M1 was already enough, and I think there's still gonna be a case to be made that previous gen M1, so non-M1 Pro, non-M1 Max, will be more than enough for most people. And I'm excited to dive into that a little bit more in future videos. So if you're not subscribed, please do so. We're gonna put this thing up against my Mac Mini and the iMac and also my M1 iPad Pro. And we'll see if this machine is worth its price tag. But that being said, this is the base model. This is only $19.99. And for what this thing is capable of, Really nothing to complain about anymore. My name is Patrick Damaso. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions about the M1 Pro, my base model, anything at all, let me know in the comments. Otherwise you will see or hear me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers.